Ladies and gentlemen, Garfield and friends. We're, we're ready, ready to, to party. Oh, oh. We're ready to party. We're ready. Yeah. I hope you bring lots of spaghetti. I'm scared. Come on in, come to the place where fun never ends. Come on in, it's time to party with Garfield and friends. Oh. Surprises! Surprises! And pies of... And pies of all, all sizes! sizes. Ah. Come on in, come to the place where fun never ends! Come on in, it's time to party with Garfield and friends! Come on in, it's time to party with Garfield and friends! Garfield and friends! Hey you, the kid who missed last week's show. You better have a good excuse. Hey, so...
host, America's Got Talent, season 16 winner, Dustin Tavella. on the stage tonight, which means we got AGT champions, we got golden buzzer acts, we have uh, season winners, we have, we have late people, so many late people. What's up, late people? What's up, guys? Whose fault is it you guys were late? Yeah, I'm talking, okay, he doesn't know what I'm talking about. What's up, man? Whose fault is it you guys were late? Whose fault? Whose fault is it? Oh, his voice was dead. Are you pointing to him, too? It's unanimous. It's his fault. Where are you guys from? Mexico, did you guys, did you guys, did it, what took you so long just coming here from Mexico? Who, who, where are you guys from? Where's everybody from? Let's just go ahead and shut, there's so many late people. Where are you guys from? What's up, late people? Chicago. Late people, where, where are the late people from? Chicago. Hold on, just the late people. <laughs> Florida? Florida? Anyone here from Florida? Okay, so like three other Florida people are on time, and I guess the rest of Florida is late, that's fine. So I'm super ADD, as you've noticed, that's fine. My name is Dustin Tavella, I'm last season's winner of America's Got Talent. I'm a, thank you guys so much, thank you guys. Um, I'm a magician, which basically means I'm a professional man-child, never really had to grow up, thanks to AGT. Pandemic though was close, almost had to become an adult, and America was like, nope, magician, so thank you guys for saving me, that was great. Um, but uh, people ask me all the time, they're like, you know, as the winner of America's Got Talent, what is it like to win one million dollars? And um, for me, to be really honest with you guys, I have no idea. Have you guys ever heard of California state taxes? Because it's so real. They just, that was the greatest trick of all. They just take everything. Um, AGT, AGT really does change lives, though. Uh, if you know anything about my story, know that my wife and I have two beautiful boys who we adopted, and they're actually here tonight. Where are they at? I'm like, yeah, 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 my family's back there. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't, get, don't get too excited. The boys came to see White Balance, Carrie came to see Cody Lee. Okay, so it's fine. But, um, but, but they're amazing. Our two boys, Andrew and Silas, they actually got to be part of one of my acts that came out to be part of one of my magic tricks. And someday when Silas is older, I'm excited to sit down with his friends and tell him, you know, Silas was on national television in front of millions of people, and he pooped his pants on stage, because he totally did. You wouldn't know, though, because my wife, like, she was just acting like the stench wasn't burning her nostrils. Um, I like to take this moment to honor moms. How many moms are in here? Can we get up for moms? Yeah. We're doing real magic. My wife does more magic in a day than I will do in a lifetime on this stage. Um, but hey, look, tonight I'm super, super stoked for you guys. Before we get too much further into all that, though, uh, let's do something else. I want to hear from you guys again. Who came the furthest to be here tonight? Just shout out. Hawaii? Dubai? Dubai? Oh, Vegas? Who just said Vegas? <laughs> I'm just going to stop asking you guys questions. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, favorite judge, go. Jomini. So everyone says, Randy, who's Randy? Randy Jackson? Who just said Randy? It's the wrong show, bro. Who just said Randy Jackson? You know, I own it. That's American Idol. Someone just bought tickets to the complete wrong show. No one's gonna own it. Who just said Randy Jackson? The same person who said they were from Vegas, and that was the furthest. That's fine. Um, many people do actually get this wrong. When I when I won the show, it was crazy because uh, there was this girl from my high school. She was on Facebook. She was like. I can't believe it. Do you guys remember Dustin? This is unbelievable. I can't believe it. It's just unbelievable. First of all, you only have to say I can't believe it one time. After that, it's just an insult, okay? You should be able to somewhat, like, am I that bad? You actually don't believe it? But, um, but she's like, I can't believe it. Dustin Tavella just won America's Next Top Model. <laughs> also not in the show. Um, but it's okay. It's not American Idol. Hopefully you still have a good time, whoever said that. What's up, we're late people? Whose fault is it you guys were late? It's my birthday. Does that mean it's your fault? I mean, happy birthday. Because I guess it woke up. But does that mean it was your fault? That means you can't say anything. <laughs> that means I can't say anything. Perfect. Well, happy birthday. Thank you for being here. Um, so look, we have some incredible, incredible acts tonight. You guys are going to get to see the winner of AGT Extreme. He's in the building. One of the performers tonight actually has the most viral audition video of all time. So without further ado, if you guys are ready to keep this thing going, make some noise. Woo! <laughs> Of America's Got 
Got Talent. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, the amazing Peter Antonio! And I saw a bracelet in the sand and walked straight up to a woman and handed her the bracelet. And she went completely pale because she'd lost the bracelet the day before swimming in the sea. I still don't know like, what drew me to that person, but I just knew that I had to. I understand why people have been quite scared of it. Because it's their deepest, darkest thoughts. I think it's easy to assume that your thoughts are like a locked room. But my skill is to convince you just to open the door a crack. And then I can move in. When I'm inside someone's mind, it's a lot like when you've just woken up from a dream. And you've got like those like flashes of feelings and pictures. As you're waking up more, you're sort of forgetting it and it's sort of drifting away. And I'm constantly trying to re-stitch it together and figure out how it connects to the person in front of me. I've thought about having a show in Vegas since I was a child. Well, that's the jackpot. And normally when I read people's minds, I need to be able to look at them in order to pick up psychic vibes. But something that America's Got Talent teaches us is to push our skills further than ever before. So tonight, I want to try something that's the hardest thing I've ever done. Are we on board for that? We could have quiet time if you prefer. Good, excellent. So, um, normally I need to be able to see you, as I said, so we're going to take away my ability to see you using this. This is industrial gaffer tape, it's the sort of thing builders and sound technicians use. And before we go any further, it's very important that you see that I don't have like a hidden earpiece in this ear, nothing electronic, no hiding people, and then in the other ear there's no hidden Sofia Vergara's, nothing like that. Because I stand on stage in front of you completely alone, apart from this rather nice suit and two pairs of underpants. And then we're going to unblindfold me, so we're going to blindfold me with this gaffer tape, and you can see again that it's completely opaque. I'm going to take this piece of gaffer tape and a poker chip that I won earlier. If you'd like to play poker with a psychic, I will be available after the show. And then we're going to stick the poker chip over my eye, just like this. Ow. Now I realise this has got a bit 50 shades of grey quite early on in the evening, so I should explain. You can all try this now. If you close one of your eyes and lightly rest your finger on your eyelid, you'll find that you can't open your eye. It's partly because you're poking yourself in the eye, but it's also because the eyelid is one of the weakest muscles in the body. It's what the tape and the poker chip are doing to my eye now, is what your finger was doing to eye just a second ago if you decided to join in. So, now that I can't see you, I'm going to need a psychic connection with a couple of you. So, if you've got an interesting object on you, I want you to take it out, wave it in the air like you just don't care. We're going to collect sort of three objects from members of the audience. So, George, grab an object idea. maybe that has a memory or something connected to it, and we'll go for that. Also, I left Where a clipboard it? somewhere yeah. down the front. Uh, so I think I left it in from the front row. Give me a cheer if you've got a clipboard. Hi, over there. Will you please draw for me a picture? You can draw anything you like, but please don't draw a house. A stick man or a wiener? It's not really the vibe of the show. Jolly good. So, we're just going to keep blindfolding me. Um, and now, obviously, I can't see, and the drop from the front of the stage is sizable. So, if I get dangerously close to walking off the front of the stage, will you just give me a whoop whoop like the sound of the police just when I'm about to walk off the stage? Thank you, two people. Let's try that again. Will you, will you give me a warning? Whoop whoop. Perfect. So, now, when you think about this act later, and you probably will, I don't want you to hand? think that I can't see. Raise your hand I want you to know in your no, bones that there is no got. way no, that I can see. So if anyone yeah. thinks your, that you know, maybe up. I need to add more duct tape, yeah, just... please speak now, and I will add it wherever you want, keeping in mind over my nostrils and mouth is hilarious, but passing out is not what I'm going for. Does anyone want me to add duct tape anywhere? Yeah. Yes, okay, where, where would we like it? Yeah. More, more on my face, more on my face, on my ears. Okay, why don't we just do... You Happy with Aries. That? Jolly good. So, more? Where, where, 
Where do you want more? Everywhere. That was yours. There, right. No more for you. Good. What's going on? So, yeah. Um, this is going to form a psychic connection, and yeah, this is going to be a show that we talk back to each other as well, so please feel free to, to, to get involved in the conversation. As soon George, as the objects are back, took your um, well, I'll use those, and as soon as you've finished your picture, please, um, if, if, you're not, if you think that it looks rubbish and you don't think people will know what it is, you can write what it is underneath. We're going to show that. Once you're done, you can just pop it on the front of the stage. We're going to grab objects, um, and we will start that. So as soon as they're back, let me know, but um, are you all enjoying Vegas so far? So that I can hear footsteps. It sounds like someone's back with. Yes, excellent. Okay, right. Will you um? And now it's. Where are you? You're right here. Perfect. Will you grab one of the objects and hold it nice and high in the air so everyone can see what the object is? And if this is your object, will you just stand up for me wherever you are and just give us a wave and we'll get a microphone to you so that we can talk to you and I can hear. You could warn me if I'm about to walk into you as well, that is fine. Yeah, that'd be cool. But, um, so as soon as you've got the microphone, just say hello. Hello. Hello, and nice to meet you. Your name is? Michelle. Michelle, lovely to meet you, Michelle. Okay, Michelle, um, as the first person I do this for this evening, would you like your horoscope for the month? Sounds good. Perfect, okay. Um, what's your favorite sandwich, Michelle? A Reuben. A Reuben, are you a Scorpio? You're Scorpio. Okay, um, so there's uh, good news and bad news for Scorpios. The good news is, due to the ascension of Neptune, you come into hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of cash. The bad news is, astrology isn't real. Sorry, Michelle, good. <laughs> right, focus on this object for me. Focus on this object. Think about the color of this object to start off with the color. Um, okay, either you're not thinking at all, Michelle, or is this white? <laughs> it's white. It's white, good, excellent. Okay, and think about this. Is this. Um, this isn't something that has like a long-lasting emotional connection, is it? Not long-lasting, but no. emotional. Emotional. Um, it's made of plastic. <laughs> the, did you live in a house with a two in the door number? Say that again. Do you live in a house with a two in the door number? Yes. Yes. Psychic or stalking, you decide. Um, <laughs> but the way that I do this is I get sort of mental images and I have to sort of pick them apart. Um, I'll explain what I'm getting in my head and then you can tell me whether it makes any sense. Um, what I'm getting is like the, the vibe of sort of Mardi Gras, does that make sense? Mm. It's sort of, it feel, it's, it's like some sort of jewellery of some sort, isn't it? It is. And it feels like sort of a fancy version of Mardi Gras beads. It is. Yes, wonderful, thank you, excellent, Michelle. You can, we'll go for the next object, so grab another object. Uh-oh, Uh-oh. Have you got one? Yes, good, okay, so if, again, if this is your object, just stand up, wave, we'll get a microphone to you. <laughs> the laughing makes nice. me a little under at this point, good. Yeah. That's cool. Whose object is this? Just say hello, as soon as you've got the microphone, you can stand up and wave so that they know Hello. You. Hello, good, lovely to meet you. What's your name? George. George, lovely to meet you, George. This is very hard with children, because children hello. think differently. George, hello, um, how old are you, George? Seven. Seven. Are you here with your wife and your family? No. no. I'm here with some of my family. You're here with some of your family. Who's your favourite? No, don't answer uh, that. It's fine. They, they'll get offended. They'll get offended. Okay, George. Can you think of the colour of this object? Don't say it. Just think it, okay? Just think it. Um, is that yellow, George? Yes. Yes, good, okay. Is this, is this a toy? Um, yes. Is it your favourite? Um... Kind of. Kind of, okay. So you wouldn't trust me with your favourite, you've given me like your second favourite, I understand Georgia. I wouldn't trust a man who looks like he lives in a bush with my favourite toy either, good. Um, mm -hmm. It's some sort of car, isn't it? Yes. It would be a dump truck, some sort of truck? No. Oh. Some sort, some sort of car truck thing, that's, that's as close as I'm going to get, George, so... Really close. That's really close. I think, thank you, that's the most encouraging you can be my parents, they were less encouraging. Good. Um, so, okay, we'll move on, we'll move on to the... <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you to the three people that decided to warn me that was about to go wrong. Like a text was too easy. Just grab the last object. Oh, yeah. um, sorry, the, the way, when I'm so, I start picking up thoughts, I start picking up random things. Um, is there someone called Luan in this section? Thinking very loudly. There's an Aries called Luan. 
Dude, you did amazing. Yeah? Well, can we get Lou and the microphone just for a second? I'm, I've been distracted. Just say hello, Lou Anne. Hello. You hello. Sorry. Um, have you ever been told that, uh, have you ever like, been to a psychic before, given readings, anything like uh, that? No. No, good, okay. Um, you've got a very loud brain. You should think very loudly. Which is a compliment, uh, Lou Anne. Um, you're an Aries, yeah? Yes. Okay, because you're sort of, there's like jumping thoughts in your head a lot that I'm sort of, is distracting me from picking up other people's thoughts, so I just thought we'd have a chat now. Um, and Luan, to be clear, like, you don't, you're not part of the show, we've never met before, you're not like a, a, a long lost family friend. No, I'm not. No. Um, right, so I've got a few things coming in my, who's Carl? Oh, my husband. Your husband. Is he here tonight? No, he's not in this hotel right now. He's not in this hotel. You didn't invite him to the show. That's fine. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, were you married in November? Oh my goodness, yes. Yes. <laughs> and it's coming up on your 32nd wedding anniversary, isn't it? Yes. Yes, good. Okay. Good. Yeah, I'm just, and we'll just keep going. Oh, you're a pet person as well. You sort of like pets. Yes. Uh, do you have cats? Yes. Couple of cats. Two cats. Two cats. And then you have a weird pet as well, don't you? Um, some people think it might be weird. Yeah. Yes. If you were going to hand an object, you'd have handed an object to do with this pet, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a turtle, isn't it? Oh yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> is he called Jack? What? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. And you're. Figaro loves him, doesn't he? Oh my gosh, yes. Good, perfect, excellent, okay. Well, really, in fact, just, just one quickly, um, are you a teacher? Yes, I am. Yeah, good, excellent, okay. Um, and um, there's like a rice connection to you as well. I don't like rice cakes, rice sun. Um, would you like me to tell you? Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. I'm just, I'm getting rices. Rice. rice Canyon Elementary. Is that, that's where you teach? Yes, it is. Perfect, excellent, thank you. Okay, right. Um, He doesn't work at that school. He doesn't work. Oh, but there's a there's a a, a, a connection. School okay. Connection. Good. Right. Um. Right. We'll make a deal. I'm going to stop picking through your brain now. And if you think less quietly, we'll, we'll go back to the show. Okay. I will try. Amazing. Thank you. Everyone, give Lou Anne a round of applause. Right. We'll do this nice and quickly because the app's running long. Uh, just shout. That's fine. If it's, if you've got the last object. Thank you. Who's whose object is that? Over there. Um, Stand, uh, up. Stand up. Just shout out as loudly as you can. Name an object that has nothing to do with what you have to do. I have cats. You have cats? Yes. Okay, that wasn't the question, but it was good information. Um, you have cats. Uh, it's a chocolate bar, isn't it? Pretty close. Pretty close? Some sort of bar, some sort of candy bar. It's a protein bar. It's a protein bar. Okay, I'll, I'll take that. That's win. Fine. Excellent. Okay. Perfect. Um, if you want to give the objects back to... <laughs> You're a little close. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. If you want to give the objects back to their rightful owners, we're not just politely rolling people. Um, did, the, did the person... I'm going to stop walking because someone keeps whooping and I'm not sure whether they're just messing with me or not. Uh, you have the picture, excellent. Will you show everyone in the room the picture so everyone knows what it is? Please don't say anything out loud, because if you turn to a mate and say, it's a house, and I hear it, terrible end of this bit. But I'm going to try and find the mic stand. Right. Perfect, thank you. Thank you to the three people who helped us. With some of you, we need to talk about directions. Good, right. So the picture, does everyone know what the picture is? Yeah. Yes, jolly good. And then I'm sure you worked very hard on it. I'm terribly sorry. Will you destroy the picture? Because in the moment I'm going to unblindfold myself. I don't want to see what it is. But if you just get rid of the picture, I'm going to. Oh, and my beer. In case you're worried about this, I am part Jared. Greek. This is a cheap wax. Dude, that was awesome. <laughs> Ow! Oh! Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. In a moment, if I look very surprised, it's because I've got no eyebrows left. That would be the 
It's the Shroud of Turin for you, little present. Right, who drew the pictures? Give me a wave and pop. Perfect. Can we get her on the microphone? And, um, right. And to be clear, this was a picture you decided on just now. No one told you to think of this picture. No one made you think of whatever this is. No. Yeah, oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. No, good. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. Um, and and th there's an English accent, so it's always worth pointing out. We don't know each other. We've never met before. You're not my, my wife, my sister. <laughs> no, perfect. Right, I want you to focus on this picture. I'm going to attempt to duplicate this. Okay. This is genuinely the hardest thing that I do. So in a moment, I'm going to show you what I think the picture is. And if I'm wrong, you will get to cosplay Simon Cowell and boo me. So if I've got this wrong, what do you do? Boo. You can be meaner than that. Boo. Yeah, with the, with the thumbs, that's exactly right. Great work, good. But if I'm right or somewhere close, you have to show that right by standing up and clapping. Deal? Yeah. That was not all of you. Deal? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. Jenny? Yeah. Yeah, good. Um, are you with Leo? Yeah. Yeah. You saw this is a big Leo vibe. Um, Brilliant. In fact, was it? Was it your birthday yesterday? What date was it yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> so you're really enjoying Vegas if you're like, what day is it anymore? Good. Um, 26th was my birthday. 26th was yeah. your birthday. Uh, perfect. Um, right, in a moment you're going to loudly announce the whole room what your picture is. So I've committed myself and I'll go for it. What was your picture? A pig. A pig. In a moment I'm going to turn this picture around. If it's not a pig, you will get to boo. If it is, you show yeah, me right by standing up and clapping. We'll do a countdown to you bring the picture. All together. One hundred. No, no, we're doing a countdown from three. All together. Three, three two, one. skill that anyone could learn. In fact, like, I know we've not discussed this because it's sort of yeah. running order of the show. Um, should we test Dustin's wow. psychic ability? Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so just, just as you, you were clapping there, um, I wrote down a word on the other side of this board. So you can see my pig. It's not the, it's not the word pig. Let you sign it. Yeah, no, no. Let your mind go blank. I've written down a word. Dustin, do you know what that word is? No. 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 How does he do it? How does he do it? Dumbest thing I've ever seen. Peter Antonio. That's for you. Good night, everyone. Woo! So uh, I'm super excited to introduce this next act to you guys. Uh, who here? Well, first of all, I just want to let you know this. Okay? Scariest act of the night. Ladies and gentlemen, with as much noise as you can make, please welcome Deadly Games. Woo! This is Alexandra, my fiance. We are Deadly Games. We are representing Brazil in Poland. What we do is a combination of beauty and danger, light and darkness. I would rate our act 100% dangerous. We risk our lives every day on the stage and finally we were recognized under the Danger Act category. This is the best I think in the world. Since then, we are now part of a huge show in Las Vegas performed to a sold out audiences. But now, we want to take it further. But tonight, we are doing some very dangerous stunts. I'm a little bit scared because things can go wrong.
You're not in the scene either. Well, imagine the audience's surprise when my lightsaber comes right off the screen. Oh, and this the one isn't in 3D. Right into their faces. You know what Get I mean? off my set. Sorry, George. literally because of all of you that we get to be up here doing what we do on the stage. So you guys just give yourselves a hand for a minute. We want to honor you guys and change our lives. We would not be here if it wasn't for all of you guys. Um, you're amazing. We love you. Uh, we also want to be here if it wasn't for one brilliant man from England who 17 years ago had this crazy idea to start a television show where people could, who could showcase their talents and maybe have their lives changed forever. That man, of course, is Simon Cowell.
I never gave up and it brought me to the AGT stage and now I'm performing in this Las Vegas show. I come from a family of danger performers. It's been my dream since I was a little boy. Thanks to America's Got Talent, we're living the life that we wanted. Our whole world changed because of America's Got Talent. This is everything we've dreamed of. Being on America's Got Talent is probably the best decision we ever made. And the best part is that little Jax gets to come along with us. Before I was on America's Got Talent, it was really hard to get gigs. I had negative. $14.87 in my bank account. I never forget that number. I never forget that number. Since being on the show, I'm not broke anymore. America's Got Talent gave us a hope for a better life here in America. This is our American dream. My daughter can look at her dad and say, man, he chased after it. Reckless abandoned no matter what. I can do the same thing. Love is the most vulnerable thing one will ever have. down onto us and is still there with the silhouettes. My goal is to make every single child, teen or adult, know that they can follow their dreams. If you believe in yourself and you do something which makes a difference, then life starts to work for you. And that's what America's Got Talent is all about. American dream is still alive and kicking.
can definitely do better than that. What's happening, everybody? <laughs> now that's what I like to hear. So, hi, my name is uh, Brandon, AKA the Random Black Guy, who probably took your photo as, as you came in. Um, uh, good to see you. I can't really see you, but you get what I mean. Um, I won season 15 of America's Got Talent doing spoken word poetry, and I got a brand new piece for you all tonight, but it's gonna require a little bit of audience participation, so you all are gonna have to treat this just like black church and talk back to me, cool? <laughs> what? All right, from that lack of days cool response, I can see many of you have not been to a black church. Uh, so, we're going to practice. The way that this goes is, when I say dreams aren't, you all say real. Let's try this on three. One, two, three, dreams aren't? Real. Try to spin on three. One, two, three, dreams aren't real. Perfect. You keep that enthusiasm, we're gonna have a great time. We did. We'll start here. Dreams are defined as a succession of images, thoughts, or emotions that flood through the mind while one is sleeping and are also oftentimes forgotten 10 minutes after we wake up in the morning. But dreams are also the aspirations we carry inside of our hearts in hopes that they may one day come true. And I find it so sad that as we grow older, we lose sight of how beautiful dreaming truly is. It's, it's, it's almost as if somewhere along the path, we fall into a trap that tells us that dreams aren't real. See, I remember being a little kid, I had this imagination that ran rampant the way I could turn my driveway to the NBA, how I would let these shots spray. And my imagination would always put three seconds left on the clock and I had the rock, so you know what comes next. So everybody, please, count down with me. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Uh, I appreciate y'all coming this, but I miss um, <laughs> But see, here's the really cool part about dreaming, is you can just rewind and reimagine the whole thing. So please, count down with me. Three, Three two, two, one. Switch. Switch. <laughs> See, on my block, this is the dream of every kid. And what I'm trying to tell y'all is, as a child, I believed I could be anything that I wanted to be. And I bet that you all did too, no matter what your dream may have been. As children, we all created more space in our lives for our imagination than we did our limitations. But now, now that we've grown older, we let that subtle voice in the back of our minds tell us that dreams aren't real. real. And these in these days, it doesn't seem like there's much of a choice between pursuing passion and pain feels and that can make one feel like dreams aren't real. real. And these mornings we get up just praying for change and things remain the same and that can make it seem like dreams aren't real. real. Because yeah. this world that will try to dictate your aspirations and ascension instead of us staring down in the eyes and saying, you know what, world? Try me. Yes, world, I dare you to try me because I am not the one who will break under pressure. No, I have a diamond in the rough who is coming into full form. I am that one in a million opportunity that will soon become reality. I give you all to pray this over yourselves in the mornings, the afternoons, the evenings when doubt begins to linger in the back of your mind and try to remind you of who you once were. Remember that who you are today, the old you once prayed for, and who you will be tomorrow can be everything you've ever dreamed of. So what I'm telling y'all is, is that dreams are far more than the things we get 10 minutes after we wake up in the morning because dreams are the reason we wake up. Dreams are the reason we press on. Dreams are the reason we live. So yes, dreams aren't real. Yeah. Yeah. Until you make them so. So my question to you all tonight is, before we leave this place, is what are you going to do with that dream of yours? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, yeah, like, I, you know, I'm just not special enough. Like, that couldn't be me to, like, fulfill this idea that I have in my head. Or, you know, everything has to be right place, right time, right everything in order for it to happen. And I'm telling you all right now, if you're waiting, if you're waiting for the perfect moment, you're going to be waiting a lifetime. And what I'm telling you is, if you're holding on to a dream and you're feeling this conviction right now, this may be your moment of divine intervention where God's telling you to go, John. Like... I'm telling you right now, there is no better life lived than a purposeful one. 
and there's no worse life lived than one with regret. So if you are holding on to a dream, go chase after. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And if we're going to talk about dreamers, there's absolutely no better act to talk about than the next person coming up to the stage. He is our season 14 winner. If you're a super fan, you should already be excited. He is a savant on the keyboard, and I need you guys to be excited. Can I get a heck yeah? Woo! Don't want nothing. You 
came right in front when I was hiding. Yeah. But now I'm so much better. And if my words don't come together, listen to the melody. Cause my love. Of time. I love you from my life. You're a friend of mine. But when my life is over, remember when we together. We're all now. Singing a song to you. I should never have 
Cody, 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 Cody. My name is Dustin Tavella. Before AGT, I just never could imagine my two worlds colliding. My passion for my magic and my story about my family. Our son Xander, we actually adopted him when he was about two months old. Xander changed everything for our family. And then we got this phone call out of the blue asking if we would adopt Xander's older brother Silas. <laughs> Unexpected moments I would consider the most real magic I've ever experienced. I want Xander and Silas to know you never have to stop chasing your dream. No matter how hard life gets, there's always some kind of magic ahead of you. The winner of the one million dollars and the star of the head you guys are up. Nice, amazing. Uh, Brandon, let's do a couple more. Someone wrote. Laugh. Who wrote laugh? I love this. This is amazing. Who wrote laugh? Over here. Nice. Thanks, bud. Love that one. Brandon, let's do a couple more. <laughs> um, nibble. Nibble. It's like someone's name. What is nibble? You're going to give someone a nibble. Want to create magic in the world? Nibble. Who wrote nibble? Someone wrote it itself. It's a miracle. You wrote nibble? What? You don't even look like a nibble kind of guy. All right. This one says, no nope, family show, way worse than Nibble. All right, so, <laughs> some of you guys need to grow up, okay? Uh, this one says, Joy, grew up Joy. Over here, Joy, I want some thank you, like some serious ones. Here we go, man, last, last chance for you to change your mind. You've been tapping your back towards me the whole time, this is great. Um, Brianna, you want to change your mind? That's the one you want. You know that one? No? Let's read it. If you want to change your mind, you would have gone with Hot dog. Okay, that's one of the dog. I'm going you guys. Here we go. Brianna, an infinite amount of things that you guys could have written. You wrote things like joy and love and laugh and, and hot dog and nibble. I just don't get it. Uh, but Brianna, you chose this one for the love of God. I hope this is serious. Um, you chose your I know. I'm sorry. Sorry, buddy. Uh, you chose the beer ball. It says hope. Who wrote hope? That's how you guys are hope. It's amazing. I'm going to show you guys what Brianna picked. Focus, focus. Here we go. You guys all see this? Brianna, you know I love you chose the word hope? Oh, you have this word burned into your brain, you know? And you have this word, um, this image burned into your mind right now, okay? I love you chose the word hope because to bring someone hope is an incredibly simple thing, right? We've been talking about simple moments and how magic can come from simple moments and, and, and hope is a simple thing, but it's also an incredibly powerful thing. But more than that, Brianna, I love that you chose hope because I told you in the beginning <laughs> about some simple moments in my life that changed me, that shaped me into who I am today. And sometimes, Brianna, it's the simple moments that have been right in front of us the entire time. Sometimes it's the simple moments in our lives that we overlook, even though they may be the exact thing that we need to inspire us to hope. H-O-P-E. Thank you guys so much. Give up for Brianna. Brianna. I'm so glad this didn't say nibble, bro. The <laughs> um, show in Las Vegas is. Tonight, I'm excited to finally get to do a little bit of magic for you all. Um, you guys are amazing. As a magician, I've realized that some people spend their entire lives looking for some form of magic. And I believe that magic is all around us. You just have to know where to look. See, uh, years ago, when my parents' marriage fell apart. I thought that that was it. I thought that was the end. But these two fought to rebuild our family. And I remember times when I was young, just sitting around, listening to my parents talk through their problems and process life, where we were all just hanging out, drinking some soda. It was these simple moments, these simple 
conversations that later in my life became proof to me that broken things don't always have to stay broken. And some of life's most real magic exists in some of life's most simple moments like those. On September 24th of 2018, my beautiful wife wrote down on a paper napkin that she believed I was going to become the winner of America's Got Talent. I was not convinced at all, but um, I decided to audition just to be rejected one season after the next. So thank you, AGT, for that. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah we can cheer for rejection. <laughs> um, thanks to my wife, she continued to believe in me. She encouraged me to audition for a third time. And uh, this time, six months later, I actually did win America's Got Talent. And so, <laughs> thank you guys so much. Give it up for her though, she's the one who's right. Yeah. She's always right. I'm totally learned to say that. I say that every day of my life. Uh, later that night, Carrie filled out a room of balloons to celebrate my victory, and I realized there would have been no victory if it wasn't for Carrie's belief in me. Who knew that something as simple as a paper napkin will become something so meaningful in my life. So I want you guys to do something for me. I want you guys to think about someone who believes in you, someone who's encouraged you somewhere along your journey. All right? I mean, everyone think of somebody. Like I'm not going here tonight. I want to make this as random as I can. I'm going to throw this ball out without looking. I mean, you guys probably should be looking. Okay, just a little tip. Here we go. Heads up. Incoming ball. Oh, nice. Look at this So can you please stand up? Someone's going to meet you with a microphone. Perfect. And uh, right now, you should have someone in mind. What's the name of the person you're thinking of? Uh, Jennifer. Jennifer? Awesome. What's your name, by the way? Mike. Mike. Can we give it up for Mike? <laughs> Mike, thank you for coming out from. Where are you, where are you from, Mike? Seattle. Seattle. Anyone here from Seattle, Washington? <laughs> Kids were so late. Did you forget you were from Washington? What just happened? <laughs> um, Mike, too, dear. Sorry, I love you guys. I'm just confused. Um, Mike. You said you think of someone named Jennifer. How do you know Jennifer? Who's Jennifer? My wife. Is this her? Yeah. How long did that take? Are you guys like, this is this a hard question? All right, Jennifer, hi, this is you. You never know, it's Vegas. You do have to double check. Um, what's up, Jennifer? Good to meet you. Um, Mike, I'm sure you have all kinds of special people in your life. Is there a reason you chose Jennifer to be the person you're thinking of right now? Nice, that's amazing. How, how long have you guys been married for? 15 years. 15? Nice, yeah, we've been for 15 years. Um, Mike, do me a favor, man. I want you to focus on the last 15 years. I want you to focus on Jennifer. I want you to focus on all the ways she's ever been there for you, the way she's encouraged you. And, uh, and focus on all those days when she's believed in you, maybe it was when it was even hard for you to believe in yourself, all right? And Mike, as you focus on Jennifer, you're going to do me a favor. You're going to make a decision. You want the red balloon, the blue balloon, yeah. or the gold balloon? Gold for sure, or do you want to change your mind? Sure. Cool, so not blue. Not blue. Not red. Not red. Uh, oh. Check this out, Mike, this looks crazy. You notice that those two balloons were empty. While you focused on your wife, while you focused on Jennifer, you were drawn to the only balloon with something inside it. And what's more crazy than the fact that something is in this balloon, Mike, is what? is in this balloon because inside this gold balloon that you just chose, a paper napkin. And written on that napkin is a name. And that name. This guy. My Uncle Gus is the one who first introduced me to magic. He did just a simple coin trick, but that coin trick blew my Niagara and whole mind. One of the most simple moments of my entire life is the moment that completely changed the entire course of my life. Um, it was that simple moment that led me to fall in love with magic and become a magician, and ultimately, that simple moment, that simple coin trick led me to this stage. But, uh, unfortunately, my my Uncle Gus never got to see how big of an impact that simple right. moment had on him. My uncle never got to see me win. America's Got Talent will never get to sit in one of the seats that you guys are sitting in right now and watch me perform on this stage in Las Vegas. 
when he passed away in 2019, I realized that life is just too short to not bring magic to as many people's lives as possible, especially if you can change the course of someone's entire future with just a few coins. It doesn't take much. It's these simple, simple, simple moments. It's where life's most powerful magic begins. That's why I want all of you guys tonight in this place to know that you can be the magic in somebody's life. Starting right now, starting with tonight. And when you guys walk in, you got a piece of paper and pencil. You guys get those out. I'm gonna have you guys do something super easy for me, okay? So before you get nervous, I'm not gonna have you guys doing like algebra or something science related, and it's gonna be super easy. Um, but you guys get those out. Mike, can you stand up with that ball? You're gonna help me one more time, bro. I want you to select the next random person. You're gonna throw that ball to anyone you want in the theater. Preferably out someone you don't know, preferably someone who's paying attention. Or someone who's not paying attention, because that sounds fun too. Oh, that's okay. She's gonna run around here. Somebody, anybody that's rolling. Did we lose it? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Hey, kiddo, can you, uh, can you actually come and join me like halfway down these steps over here? Well, she makes her way down. Um, everyone else, you guys are going to write down one word or a short phrase, okay? Something that you can do or give or bring to the people in your life. Um, maybe you want to write a word like joy or laughter. Um, maybe you want to write a short phrase like encourage someone who needs it. Make it as personal or as specific as you want to. But again, we're talking about simple moments. Don't overthink it. Keep it simple. One word, one short phrase. While you guys do that, you can down a couple more steps if you'd like. And um, can you shout your name for me nice and loud? Brianna? Awesome. Brianna, are you cool to help me out with this next part? For sure? Can I get two thumbs just for the people who couldn't hear you that they can see your two thumbs? Can I get two thumbs up? So they know you're committed, it's your decision, everything that's about to happen is Brianna's fault, okay? Perfect. Um, you guys, you can take those pieces of paper, crumble them up into a ball. Here's what we're going to do. We need to get Brianna as many of these paper balls as possible. So now she's on the count of three, we're going to throw them to her, okay? Here we go. One, two, three, go ahead and start throwing those to Brianna. Go, 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 go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm going to see all these hands go to the side. All the hands go to the back. When the window is too wide, make sure they get all over the brand. Um, keep going, keep going, keep going. money. You guys can throw money if you want. Brand, I wouldn't mind. Um, some of you guys are going way too hard. Brand is like three feet away. What's happening? Um, keep those going, keep those going. Brand, do me a favor. Brand, can you grab like a bunch of those? Let's get like a bunch, like two big handfuls of them. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, Brianna. And then, um, Brianna, if you can come join me in the oh. front. Give it up for Brianna. She makes her way to the front right up here, Brianna. Thank you so much. Right here in front of the birthday girls. Yeah, right over here, Brianna. Okay, yeah, my call does. Yeah, we can drop those right there on the stage. Oh, right here, Brianna. Where at? Upland, and then there's an upland. You guys see this guy was giving the nuts? What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> what do you need this one? Uh, what is yours? Sit down, bud. What is yours? It says George. Thank you. Is Thank that you? you? Who's George? Who's George? <laughs> he just made up the name of George. All right, George. <laughs> this is George. Brianna, do me a favor. You're going to choose one of these paper balls. I like you. Anyone that you want, <laughs> hold that paper ball nice and high. That one? For sure, do you want to change your mind? I do. That's the one? All right, Brandon, I'm going to read a couple of these other ones. You can keep that one like that for now. Um, if at any point you want to change your mind, you're more than welcome to. I want you to remember this moment. I'm going to read a couple of these ones that you could have read, uh, read or picked. Uh, this one says... Uh,
my name is not Eve. <laughs> I'm Han. I'm Solo. A pleasure to meet you, Master Solo. Yeah, whatever, Goldie Bear. <laughs> Great. I'm glad we'll never see him again, aren't you? There are other people that fit the suit, you know what I'm saying? Your friends are in the rest!